I've been asked by a lot of viewers about Volt's ability to provide RESTful JSON APIs. If you're building a mobile application alongside your web application, that's a really important feature for your framework to have. So does Volt provide you the ability to build a REST API? The good news is that yes, Volt can be used to create REST APIs quite easily. Today I'm going to show you how that's done. For today's example, I've built an API that's going to store sensor readings using REST API calls. Let's try it out before we learn how it was built. I'll run all of my examples using the HTTPy tool, which is similar to curl and wget. If you want to learn more about how it works, check out httpy.org. The API allows me to create and list sensor readings that have a timestamp and a temperature field. I can make one by performing a POST request to a URL and providing a temperature reading as a parameter. Let's do that right now. Okay, so that was simple enough. As you see here, it returned a JSON object with temperature data, a timestamp, and a unique ID. Let's create one more. Now we can list all the readings by performing a git request to the index action. And there they are. How would we create an API like this using Volt? Like always, we're going to start a new project using the Volt new command. And I'd like to point out that I'm using Volt 0.9.4 pre-release 1. If you're trying to use version 0.9.3, you're going to hit some issues. So please be aware of that as you do the tutorial. Now that the application has been generated, we need to create a model. And we can do that using the Volt G model command. I'm going to call this model sensor reading. I'd like to stop here for a quick refresher on Volt collections and models. This part's going to be especially important if you're new to the Volt framework. If you've only worked with Active Record or SQL in the past, it might take some getting used to. Um, so the important thing to note about all of this is that Volt comes with these objects called collections. And collections sometimes mean storing things in the database. And other times it means storing things in other places like HTML5 local storage. Uh, so with our API, we're going to be storing models in the default database, which as of 0.9.4 is MongoDB. And MongoDB is a schemaless database, so we don't need to worry about writing migrations or anything like that. And it's actually in, uh, possible to attach entirely new fields to the model at runtime without defining them, uh, similarly to how a Ruby hash works. But I'm not going to cover that today. If you want to learn more about Volt models, take a look at the episode where I build the real-time chat app, or take a look at the Volt documentation. For right now, just get in the mindset that our API models are being stored in MongoDB, and that models can be stored in a variety of places in a Volt application. Now that you understand how Volt models work, let's go ahead and add some fields to our model. A temperature field is going to be added for storing temperature data, and we're also going to add a timestamp field that's going to be set by the controller. Both of these fields are going to be of the numeric class, and Volt is going to do validations on that for us. Now that our model's been populated with code, we need to generate an HTTP controller. So let's go ahead and do that via the Volt Generate HTTP Controller command. Notice that I typed HTTP controller instead of controller. That's because they're not the same thing in Volt. A traditional, normal, you know, regular Volt controller will run on the front end, but an HTTP controller like the one we just created is more similar to a Rails-style controller where everything happens on the server. 
Before I edit the code inside of those HTTP controllers, I want to go ahead and add some stuff to the routes file. Uh, there's two ways we can, that we can do this. Um, the first way is by manually putting in each route. And this works great for small applications, but your route file is going to start getting cluttered as the application grows. So one workaround that exists in Volt is to use the uh, REST method. This is, a, uh, this is very similar to resourceful routing in Rails. So we can take these two methods right here and we can replace them with this, which is going to do both but in one line. The first action we're going to create in the HTTP controller is the create action. This method gets called when we perform an HTTP post and it's eventually going to store a new record in the MongoDB database. And we access MongoDB by calling the store object. And since we defined a sensor reading model, we can access that the collection of sensor reading models by using underscore notation, as you see here. You can think of underscores similarly to square brackets on a hash. Uh, the underscore lets Volt know that you're accessing a member of the store collection. And in this case, it's the collection of all sensor reading objects in the database. And like I said, the post method is a creation method. So we're going to need to call append on that collection. And we want to add a new sensor reading. So the next part's going to be a little bit surprising if you're a Ruby developer. Uh, or I should say, if you're strictly a Ruby developer, if you've dealt with JavaScript, uh, you'll be pretty familiar with this. And so Volt uses promise objects whenever it's doing any type of access to the database. And this makes code that's very declarative and easy to troubleshoot. And it also makes it easy to share Ruby code between the front end and the back end. So I particularly like it. But like I said, it does take a little bit of getting used to if you are used to working strictly in Ruby. Lastly, we're going to add a failure case. And you do that by calling dot .fail on the pro uh, promise object. Volt promise objects are going to return all errors in a single object that can be presented to the user, and they automatically get serialized to JSON. Now that we're on the subject of data validations, let's see what happens when we send the Volt API some bad data. I'm going to try to do a post request, but I'm not going to send any parameters. Let's see what happens. As you can see right there, Volt caught the error that we did not attach a numeric temperature parameter, and it let us know that by serializing the error object to JSON. It does all of this for you automatically. Now we need to create an index action so that we can view all of the sensor readings that are in the database. As you see here, there's not a whole lot of magic going on. Uh, in Volt, like I said earlier, all database actions or all collection actions are going to be returning a promise object. So we can handle it pretty much the same way we did in the create action, uh, except instead of calling append, we call all. But that's pretty much the only difference here. Let's hit the index action to make sure that worked. Great. It worked. It returned a collection of sensor readings, just as we expected. I hope you enjoyed today's screencast, and I'd also like to give a special thank you to viewer Ian Donovan for requesting the topic of today's screencast. If you've got an idea for a future screencast, or there's something about the Volt framework that you don't understand and would like an explanation for, please let us know by visiting us, uh, us at datamelon.io and sending us a message. And again, thanks for watching.